Have you ever really thought about how oxygen gets into the body? It is something that we do automatically, on an unconscious level, and it seems so simple. However, it is actually a complex process, one that involves many different structures and steps. Let's go on an oxygen journey. Firstly, take a deep breath in, feel the air go into your lungs whilst your chest expands, and now breathe out. This process of breathing is called ventilation and is the act of getting air in and out of the body. The respiratory system consists of many ducts and pipes that are responsible for filtering the air before it gets into the system. There is the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. Both of these tracts are lined with mucus and cilia. The mucus helps to warm and moisten the air whilst also trapping any dust, pollen or other irritants. The cilia, which are hair-like structures, then move this mucus upwards for it to be expelled. Think about the times when you have hay fever or a cold and you have to keep blowing your nose. This is your mucus and cilia working to get those nasties out. The upper respiratory tract contains the nose, pharynx and larynx, which are all essential cavities for the air to pass through. It is here that the air is warmed and moistened before it goes into the lungs. And this is really important because the air has to be humid before it hits the lungs. The lower respiratory tract contains the trachea, or the common name the windpipe, the bronchi and the bronchioles, the alveoli and the lungs. Now before you go thinking that it sounds like an expensive pasta dish, visualise the lower respiratory tract as like an upside down tree encased in two sponges. The long trunk of the tree is the trachea and this is your main pipe from the throat into the lungs. It is lined with mucus and has C-shaped rings of cartilage to help hold it open. And you can actually feel these on yourself here. Obviously, with the trachea being the only pipe to get air in and out of the lungs, it is disastrous if this ever becomes blocked or shut off. Choking is an example of this. The trachea then branches to form a left and a right branch to enter the lungs. These two branches are called the bronchi, and as they descend deeper into the lungs, they further branch off into smaller branches that cover the area of the lungs. These are called bronchioles, and are like the many branches on a tree. Hence, this collectively is called the bronchial tree. The functions of the bronchi and the bronchioles are to further provide passages for the air to move in and out of. The alveoli are the leaves on the tree. However, under a microscope, they look more like bunches of grapes. The bronchioles terminate at these alveoli sacs, and this is where gas exchange occurs. There are millions of alveoli. In fact, if you could open up your lungs and spread out the alveoli, they would cover an entire tennis court. This huge amount of surface area is designed to maximise gas exchange. Their walls are super thin, so as to allow this gas exchange or in a technical word, respiration, to occur. In this case, this means where gases of high pressure move into an area of low pressure. So at this level, oxygen moves into the blood capillaries to be transported to the heart, and the carbon dioxide from the blood moves into the alveoli so as to be expired. When the oxygen moves into the blood in the capillaries, we say that the blood is oxygenated. Another type of respiration that occurs is when there is a gas exchange between the blood and the tissues of the body. For example, when oxygen needs to be transported into a muscle cell and carbon dioxide needs to move out of a muscle cell, it is called internal respiration. The lungs. they are two big sponge-like organs that can be found in the chest and encapsulate the entire bronchial tree. They have a distinct shape in which there is an apex a base and is lined with a pleura. The lungs are quite big. The apex is about here and the base being about here. The pleura is a membrane that lines the chest cavity and covers the outer surface of the lungs to reduce friction when breathing. The function of the lungs is breathing, or more specifically, ventilation. When we breathe, there are two distinct phases. Inspiration, which is breathing in, and expiration, breathing out. Inspiration is an active process and involves muscles such as the diaphragm, the intercostals and the abdominals. 
As the lungs expand, these muscles will also contract to expand the ribcage and the diaphragm will pull down on the lungs. The increased volume in the lungs causes a decrease in the pressure, which causes air from the outside to rush in. Then, when everything relaxes and the lung volume is decreased, the increased pressure in the lungs forces the air out. Do you remember the diaphragm muscle from the muscles of the trunk? When the inner unit was discussed, it was established that the diaphragm was the lid of the paint can. So due to its role in both ventilation and core stability, you can understand how important it really is.